a hot bee. It's a lifestyle. My name is Cassidy. I'm 28 years old, and this is my story. I didn't come from an aviation background. I fell into it completely by chance. From my first flight in a Piper Clipper to now the chief mechanic of a flying warbird museum, I've experienced a lot of what aviation has to offer. However, I have never crossed over into commercial aviation, for example, airline maintenance. I've worked experimental, light sport, general, corporate, and ag aviation, and I have had the opportunity to work on most things, from home-built RVs to Pilatus with a few helicopters in between. I pretty much grew up at airports as a kid, thanks to divorced parents, but at the time had no interest in aviation and really had no understanding of it besides getting on one airplane, flying to here, get on another, go see my parents. I really wanted to be a librarian, uh, but yeah, we see how that turned out. I didn't get an intro into general aviation until just before I finished high school, thanks to my boyfriend at the time. His dad had the Piper Clipper, and they took me along on a flight to Bonifay, Florida, where I met a few of the instructors for the Alabama Aviation Community College. That was the beginning of the end for me. I graduated high school on a Thursday, and the following Tuesday was my first class at AACC. School wasn't great at first. Let me tell you, I don't learn well from reading how to do it. I work best from being able to be hands-on with the project. I really wasn't sure I was going to be able to stick it out. And, well, I was also one of the few females that was there. All my classes were mostly guys. So that didn't help anything. But it really all came together for me in engine overhaul class. Tearing down and reassembling that piston engine sealed the deal. While I was attending college, I became an apprentice with Double Bridges Aviation, a flight school in Enterprise, Alabama. Quentin Jerkins was a better mentor than I could have ever hoped for. Thanks to his teaching and the maintenance I got to do for him, I was able to secure a job in aviation before I graduated school. Now, kind of a side note, this job was where I got my first taste of warbirds. And it wasn't because Quentin was maintaining them, it's because a DC-3, who later became known as Virginia Ann, broke down at the Enterprise Airport, and I pretty much wouldn't leave them alone until they let me help. The next step of this journey took me from Alabama to Pennsylvania, and I started out as a newly licensed mechanic at Heritage Aviation. Now, this was a flight school, but they also did work on customer aircraft, so I would be maintaining anything from a Cessna 150 to a Cessna Conquest. Now, again, on a side note, Warbirds made another appearance here while I was working on this job. Uh, the owner of Heritage Aviation owned the General's Mistress, and it was a North American T-6. And also in this time frame, a DC-4 that was a traveling museum out of Teterboro, New Jersey, stopped in, and I got a chance to kind of hang around that pre-flight work on it a little bit. And that was kind of starting to put the bug, but at that time, I still didn't really understand warbirds. So, continuing on in general aviation. However, this job didn't end on a good note. I learned, unfortunately, as a new mechanic, the importance of always verifying for yourself any maintenance you're a part of. And I also learned the power of the FAA. This is an experience that I would not like to repeat, and I would like that other people don't have to go through this as well. So as the job in Pennsylvania came to an end, I found my job, next job, in the great state of Texas. I became a mechanic for a, sh a small shop at a Cherokee County airport called First Line Arrow. Now, this is a mom and pop operation, which I was new to. So this was my first introduction to the Piper Malibu and the King Air. I wasn't there long, however, when I was involved in an accident with a Cessna 210. Please be aware. The nose gear can be retracted on the ground when you try to close the gear doors if you get the sequence out of order. Unfortunately, I learned the hard way as I was the one under the aircraft when the nose gear was retracted. Now, this was not intentional, and we all learned a valuable lesson. So quickly, I became a quote-unquote expert in AD research and logbooks, seeing as maintenance was kind of out of the question. I also got to learn about the inner workings of dealing with a paint shop and an aircraft brokerage outfit, and I was kind of starting to learn that there was a lot more to aviation than just being a mechanic or a pilot. Thankfully, the accident didn't take me out of the running to continue to be a mechanic. I would have been pretty devastated to have lost that. When my time with First Line Arrow ended, I found myself in Bellingham, Washington, the furthest away I had ever been from home. Now, in Bellingham, there was this shop, 
there is this shop called Command Aviation. And this was my second run-in with a family-operated shop, and I was definitely coming to enjoy this atmosphere. The shop is also a flight school and a general maintenance shop. So Cessna 170s up to Pilatus and everything in between. The shop really put the skills that I had learned over the last few years to the test. I was working with radials, horizontally opposed, and turbines. And Craig Scamhorn, the owner and director of maintenance, is a wealth of knowledge. And I am very thankful for the knowledge that he passed on to me. Now, Warbirds makes another appearance here in the form of two North American T6s. And I was really beginning to like the idea of working on Warbirds, but I hadn't yet found a way into it. It's a very tight-knit group, and it's not an easy one to infiltrate if you don't know the right people. Now, during my time with Command, I decided to take a little bit of time off and pursue an opportunity in the agricultural industry in eastern Washington. Now, this was kind of out of my comfort zone. The fleet was all radial engines. However, it's what the radials were attached to that was kind of a bit of a new thing for me. I took a job working for a cherry grow outfit, working on a Sikorsky 58 helicopter. Now, not just one, not just two, but 11. These are monsters of a helicopter, and these guys are solely used to dry the cherries after a rain at the peak season to protect the fruit from splitting. Now, 11 of these is super rare. This is the most piston engine fleet in the world since most have been converted to turbine. Now, this was a remarkable opportunity, and I thoroughly enjoyed the season I spent with them. So at the conclusion of the season, I headed back to command. However, I ended up living in a hangar at the Skagit Regional Airport for a little while because I didn't necessarily have a place to go. And as fate would have it, it was this move that really changed the course of my future and would finally give me the opportunity of a lifetime. I ended up meeting Hal Beatty and Sid Slade of the Heritage Flight Museum when they helped me forklift my hot pink snap-on toolbox out of a U-Haul trailer. Now, I still believe the next part was all brought on because of my wicked cool toolbox, but it could have also been my recent job with radials. Hal asked me if I was looking for a job. I had already made plans to go back to command, but I decided to help on a volunteer basis, since by this point in the game, after almost seven years of having an airframe and power plant mechanic license, I had gotten my IA. They needed an IA. I wanted to work on Warbirds. As you can see, it was pretty much a win-win situation. Hal was the mentor of a lifetime. He took me on just in volunteer basis, and eventually, after volunteering for a while, I got offered a paid, paid position as a mechanic for the museum, and that eventually became a full-time gig. I worked alongside Hal, learning all that I could, and I became the first woman to sign off the Mustang Valhalla for an annual inspection, and well, the rest is history. I've been with the museum for a year and some change. Hal is retired, and I am now the chief mechanic of a fully flying Warbird Museum. The Heritage Flight Museum is family-owned and operated, and it's a place where I feel like I'm part of the family. I'm grateful that the Anders family has given me the opportunity to shine and show that I can be the mechanic they need. Aviation has been full of ups and downs, which has led me to where I am today. At 28 years old, I am very thankful for the opportunities that I have been given, and I'm very proud of myself for not giving up when the times got tough, even though I wanted to. With some help from my mom, financially for school, and just as being my cheerleader and support group, I stuck it out, and if I hadn't have stuck it out, I wouldn't be here. I've gone from helicopters to fixed wings, and I found my love to be in warbirds. My advice to you is keep them flying. Everything we can do helps keep our history alive. And remember, aviation isn't a hobby, it's a lifestyle. Do me a favor. What's your name? My name is Cassidy. And Cassidy, what, what do you do here? Uh, well, I'm an AMPIA, and I maintain everything that you see in this hangar. And that is a lot of aircrafts, guys. That is a lot of aircraft. Yeah. Uh, did, how long have you been doing this? Uh, well, I've been a mechanic for almost 10 years. I've been here for a year and some change. I took over when the chief mechanic, uh, who was here originally, retired. He kind of brought me in and said, hey, we're working on a Sky Raider. You want to come hang out? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I absolutely would. So started the annual um, on the Sky Raider and finished up for the first one there. And then that was it, hook, line, and sinker. And I've been here ever since. So, But I've worked on mostly small general aviation, 
a DC3, DC4 here and there, um, a couple of T6s, but mostly Cessna 150s up to Falcon jets, a little bit of everything My in goodness. between. That is incredible. And that's a, this, this is a lifetime right here. Yeah, definitely yeah. no getting out of it anytime soon. It is, uh, it's definitely worth it. I love it, and I yeah. enjoy doing what I'm doing. And so where are we at right now? What town? So we're in Burlington, Washington at the uh, Heritage Flight Museum. We're almost 20, right around 20 airframes strong, and they are all airworthy. Minus, I think we're up to about four unairworthy due to being like GSA aircraft and then the uh, Sabre jet that's outside. But everything else runs, flies, operates, and the only things that are not currently home, we have a T6 that's up in Bellingham. We have two T-34s that are out in uh, Anacortes, one up on the other side getting major avionics redone. And then we also have a... Uh, Let's see the Sky Raiders outside, and we have another T6 outside. But and you're Cassidy, is it? I'm Cassidy. Cassidy, what's your last name, Cassidy? Moore. Cassidy Moore. And Cassidy, what's your favorite airplane here? Oh, Sky Raider. Really? Oh yeah. You got to come talk to Tom. Come on. <laughs> come on, let's go talk to Tom. Hey Tom, I got a surprise for you. Guess who maintains the Sky Raider around here? <laughs> Cassidy. <laughs> Cassidy, meet Tom Dwelly. Tom Dwelly, meet Cassidy. <laughs> Good for you. Where'd you learn how to She maintains all the aircraft here. I went to school in Alabama for two years through technical school and uh -huh. then started working in Pennsylvania and I've kind of moved around from there and now I'm here. Well, about five well years. let me see She's your finger now. <laughs> <laughs> She's an IA. Hey, hey, oh, well, an IA? Yeah. This, this is what you want to do. Hey, Tom, come here. This is this is what you want to be careful of. This is this is Tom. <laughs> yeah, and, right. and and we're, we're actually Tom was careful. Something he was handling wasn't careful. <laughs> well, you two, you two have something in common then. She had an airplane fall on her. So other than that, Ooh. she's she's not been story. Yeah, yeah, I was working on a Cessna 210 when one of the guys I was working with retracted the nose gear while I was under the aircraft. Oh my God. So how how do you? I didn't think you could. Oh, you the, can. 210 the 210 is kind of a. Mm -hmm. That's if weird you get thing. It, it's hydraulic. It's the original, one of the um, early models. Yeah, so if yeah. you get the sequence out of order and turn the master switch on with Ouch. the nose gear unlocked and you don't realize you do it. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah, so she's got she's trial by fire. <laughs>